Welcome to my tutorial covering the field of computational geometry in Python. Um, if you'd like to follow along, just go to the GitHub page for this project, Tyler J. E. Reddy slash PyCon2016, and clone it. So there's a clone URL right here. Um, there's a few different options for following along. Um, hopefully most of you have, uh, have already set it up so that you can use the code interactively. Um, but if you need to follow it statically for whatever reason, maybe you can't install the libraries in your machine, um, you, could, you could, for example, just uh, load the page, uh, the HTML on the GitHub page and follow along statically. But hopefully most of you will be able to, uh, to run this uh, dynamically through uh, the Jupyter Notebook platform um, as I go through. Um, but this should render automatically as HTML, as you can see here. So all the images will be available, just the interactive components won't be, won't be available if, you, if you'd like to, to play around with uh, the calculations as I go through. Um, so the content of the tutorial is uh, largely inspired by the recent textbook, uh, Discrete and Computational Geometry by Davidos and O'Rourke. Um, but that's a, it's a language agnostic textbook, and I thought I'd come up with some, um, some examples of usage uh, for, for my own field of research. Um, and also things that people have uh, emailed me, asked me about, um, and, and touch on some of the ideas that, uh, that have come out of, of working on uh, open source Python tools and computational geometry um, beyond the, the language agnostic examples in the textbook. Um, so first let's load all of the libraries that are, that are needed to run the code. There's a few third party libraries. Uh, the, um, the triangle library, this one here, is um, it's, uh, an API to a award-winning uh, computational geometry uh, constraint triangulation library written by a professor at Stanford. Uh, many of the others are pretty standard though, so SciPy, there's the excellent SciPy.spatial library, um, which I've been involved in the development of. Um, we'll need matplotlib. I'm going to do an extensive amount of plotting because visualization is crucial to understanding the sort of fundamental behavior of algorithms and computational geometry. Um, the widgets will work if you're running the notebook on your own machine and you've installed all the libraries and you're running off of your own, uh, your own disk. But if you're using the, the Docker option, so I did actually uh, produce a Docker image in case you're working on, say, a Windows machine where it's a bit harder to install some of the libraries. Um, there it will be uh, not possible to run the widgets, but the code should otherwise execute, execute normally so you can still play around uh, and save your work. Um, so just uh, in terms of, I mean, most of you probably have some interest in computational geometry if you're, if you're here at the tutorial, um, but just in case some of you are maybe just sort of curious and you don't have a huge, a huge amount of, um, you know, experience working in computational geometry, uh, just a few words on, on why it's important. Um, the definition, basically, it's a study of computer algorithms that perform geometric operations, and this can be with, uh, with polygons in two dimensions, with polyhedra in, in three and, and, and more than three dimensions, um, and also in point sets, which is the main thing I tend to use it for. So many things like, uh, like viruses, for example, I've cited computational biochemistry and virology. Um, these can be roughly spherical objects, which are of biological relevance, um, but they're also effectively just clouds of coordinates in three-dimensional space, um, for which we can extract really useful parameters by leveraging the power of computational geometry. Um, but more commonly, things like computer graphics, generating meshes, computer aid design and drafting and architecture, uh, all kinds of industries, uh, car design and engineering, um, the same thing for, for housing, building houses, designing houses, uh, robot motion planning and drones and collision avoidance, um, concepts like the convex hull and Delaunay triangulations and Voigner diagrams are used extensively in those fields. Geographic information systems, I think this is probably the most common um, field of application that I get emails about. So if I'm developing a tool, especially uh, my recent work on spherical Voronoi diagrams, I get emails about people working on, on oceans and, and, and mapping applications. They want to do really accurate calculations. And for that, uh, some of the tools that we have in Python and that we're developing in Python are actually really quite powerful. Even things like search and rescue, um, you know, in recent, in the last decade or so, we've had a few cases where sort of airplanes go missing or there's a need to do a, a sort of fairly rapid response to search and rescue uh, situation. And in those cases, uh, you know, having really good tools for, for, for open and, and, and highly accurate and, and, and fast uh, computational geometry calculations on the surface of the earth can be quite, 
quite useful. Uh, epidemiology, so the, the classic example that, that I often use and that we'll actually solve uh, today using the original data is, uh, is uh, uh, water contamination, for example. So you have um, a series of water sources and you want to know which uh, residential locations are closest to the contaminated water sources. So you can use a Voronoi diagram to figure out um, which residents are likely getting their water from certain locations and then connect that with, with reported illnesses and try to figure out where the source of the contamination is. Um, similarly, ecology, so you might take uh, reported sightings from a general population, so a certain animal, a certain predatory species, or a certain uh, species that's at risk has been you know, observed in a certain number of locations, and you want to figure out roughly what's its habitat, so you could draw a sort of a convex hull around that data. Integrated circuit design, um, economical construction of physical networks, so if you want to uh, construct a network which has really expensive wiring, um, for whatever reason, you want to save money if possible, uh, it might be well worth your time to actually do a bit of uh, computational geometry using, using Python or your language of choice um, to figure out uh, the cheapest option there. Even cooking ingredients, um, so if you're, if you're doing a sort of um, a really big cooking project and you've sort of researched uh, seven or eight different recipes and you can't decide on which one, and then eventually you end up with a whole, sort of a whole mix of different ingredients, you can sort of take the common ingredients from each recipe, look at the amounts that are required, and plot the amounts of different components of the recipe on different axes and use that to figure out which ones will likely put you in a sort of a general convex hull region where the recipe is likely to turn out um, in a way that you would like.